Welcome back. C.S. Lewis's best-selling book, The Horse and His Boy, is now a stage production playing at the Museum of the Bible's World Stage Theater in our nation's capital. It is a Logos Theater production, and Studio 5 traveled to the theater for a preview. There was only one lion. How do you know? I was the lion. Let's begin with this particular C.S. Lewis story and for it to be a stage production. How would you describe it? It's an absolute adventure. <laughs> They're going to go on a wild ride. To Narnia and the North! It's a whole production following their stories, watching their journey. So as they're telling their stories, sometimes their story comes around them and flows and moves. So you really are never still. Oh, wow. We take them on an epic journey to mm -hmm. see two children really find their purpose, who they are. You play, Lily, you Erebus. play? You play Erebus. Erebus Tarkina in The mm -hmm. Horse and His Boy. Erebus is this very uh, stuck-up, kind of courageous girl <laughs> who goes through these adventures in Narnia um, with her friend uh, Shasta. Mm -hmm. They meet kind of towards the beginning of the play, mm -hmm. and then um, there's a lot of banter that goes back and forth between them, so it's very fun, um, before they end up with Aslan in Narnia. She's a character who is longing for something greater and longing for a purpose, which she finds later in the book in Aslan. I'm the most unluckiest boy in the whole world. Where did you take my son? Brenton, you, what's your role in this play? Um, I play Shasta, mm -hmm. and he doesn't really think much of himself. He doesn't know what his calling is or anything like that until he meets a talking horse, and then he goes on a journey and meets another talking horse and a girl, and then he tries to get to Narnia and he eventually makes it and finds out he's a prince. This horse, Ida, that's a Tarkhan under the edge of the wood. What's it like to be on stage with these massive puppets? It's, it's amazing. It's, it's very fun. What's it like for you to bring his productions to mm. stage? When we first started Narnia, obviously you have to think about the lion. How will you do the lion? For me, it really needed to be something that could be symbolic and represent, like representative. So it's not like I've tried to give you an exactly real lion, but giving him enough presence. So that was our first, I guess, challenge is to how do we do Aslan? Justin, you're the puppet master. You yes. create all that we're seeing on stage? Um, with help, yeah. I, I'm the spearheader. Talking through all the different functions of what it needs to do. Tell me about the puppets we are seeing on stage in this production. Our horses are very, very lifelike, very realistic, mm -hmm. um, because the type of story that we're trying to tell, uh, we want people to be um, really engaged and um, connected to these puppets because they each have an arc and a story of their own that we want people to learn and grow with. Along with that comes all the different challenges. You have, you have a man who turns into a donkey. You have um, a cat. You've got a raven that speaks. There's, so there's several other puppetry and tricks that we're doing um, to kind of bring these books to life. Well, it was bad luck to meet so many lions anyhow. And then we'll meet some trees, walking trees, because it's fantasy, it's Narnia. Why not throw some walking <laughs> trees in there? <laughs> I do not call you unfortunate. You where would you say this story fits in the C.S. Lewis catalog? It's this really neat glimpse that Lewis gives us of the golden years in Narnia, when the High King Peter and Edmund and Susie and Susan and Lucy were in ruling and reigning. Mm -hmm. So we don't get a lot of that in the other Narnia books. It may not be as, as well known for many people, but once they read The Horse and His Boy, I think it quickly becomes one of their favorites. The Narnia books bring a burden, and it's not a bad burden, mm -hmm. but it's a burden of excellence. And it's also a burden because what a legacy, what a legacy that Lewis has given us. Mm -hmm. But it's a blessing at the same time because these books were written to bless people, to challenge people, to help people, to meet them in their need and take them to a conclusion that would be hope filled. Amazing. Even when you feel like there is no hope, you can find hope in Aslan who is a representative of God. 
The Horse and His Boy is playing right now at the Museum of the Bible's World Stage Theater. It is running through March 3rd. For more uplifting entertainment, be sure to join us for a special edition of Studio 5 tonight. Grammy winner Dante Bo, singer Katie Nicole, and the $25 million movie man will all be joining us. You can catch Studio 5 on the CBN News Channel this evening at 8.30 Eastern. You can also find it on the CBN News app or you can watch on